the next movie, what did I say it was? Amazing Grace and Chuck. So upset. A little bit of a change of pace here. The story of a little league pitcher <laughs> who goes on a tour of a nuclear missile base, and he's so disturbed by what he sees that he refuses to pitch anymore. He's just a kid. He's about 12 years old. He doesn't have any big master plan. He simply says, until the bombs go away, he says, it's my duty to refuse to do the thing that I do the best, which is pitch little league baseball. The kid's decision makes the national news, and in this scene, his father is angry over how the publicity has upset their family life. Your mother has to use the back door at her own home now. Would you like to hear some of the calls I'm getting down at the lumberyard? That's Joshua Zolke as the idealistic young pitcher, and William L. Peterson as his father. Meanwhile, in Boston, amazing Grace Smith, a star basketball player for the Celtics, played by Alex English, Here's about what Chuck has done, and he decides to do the same thing. Stop playing basketball until the bombs go away. He comes out west to visit the kid, and in this scene, the father and the basketball player trade angry words. I'd kind of like to take my son fishing Sunday, if that's okay with you. Sure. You can even take him out to supper as long as you have him home early. Jamie Lee Curtis plays the player's business manager, and like a lot of people, she's upset by his decision. But what do you want me to do? I just want you to come back. Just come back to Boston. Come back to the team. The protest grows into a worldwide movement on both sides of the Iron Curtain, and Gregory Peck plays the U.S. president who tries to talk Chuck out of his protest. This movie ends with the words, wouldn't it be nice? And I guess that's the bottom line for the whole picture. Wouldn't it be nice if one little leaguer's concern about nuclear weapons did grow or could grow into a worldwide peace movement? Amazing Grace and Chuck did not convince me that such a movement would be possible, but I don't think that was the purpose of the movie, to be realistic. I think this movie is more of a fantasy, more of a parable that asks the question, could any of us really go on with our daily lives if we really stopped to think about the massive overkill of the world's nuclear arsenal? This movie makes the whole issue very personal, very simple. This kid just doesn't see the point of pitching one more inning if we're all going to go on making bombs to kill everybody a thousand, thousand times over. I started out in a mood to be sort of condescending toward this movie in the first half hour or so, but in the end, with its innocence and its simplicity, it sort of won me over. It did win me over, too, and I'll tell you, I originally I thought it was just an expanded made-for-TV movie. Yeah. It starts out, and it looks that way, and you mm -hmm. think it'll be promoted as you know an anti-war film and mm -hmm. it's cute and all that kind of a thing. I think what makes the movie work as a movie, like, worth playing in a big theater, frankly, is... The script, mm -hmm. because the script is very minimal. The kid is very quiet. Yeah. He just simply says, I won't play. Mm -hmm. He doesn't answer a lot of questions. He does it almost, I, I don't want to compare him to Gandhi, but the, the essence mm -hmm. is, in being quiet, mm -hmm. you gain power. And then another person joins him, yeah. and they're quiet. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue with the president, which can be obviously very cornball, a little boy in president, if there's a lot of talking back and forth, the kid is still quiet. I was so yeah, impressed yeah. that somebody was on the set, Mike Newell, the director, and then David Field, who wrote the script, yeah. mm -hmm. kept things down and quiet. They don't make the mistake of trying to explain too much yes. and turn into a lot of political speeches. Now, the scene where Gregory Peck comes in, this is an old Hollywood tradition. Right. You get a legendary actor, yeah. somebody like Gregory Peck, and you have him play the president of the right. United States, and then he comes over ordinarily as wooden and phony. Yes. Not this time. Yes. Gregory Peck convinced me. Yes that he was listening to this kid, yes. he had a lot of things on his mind, yes. but he also was open enough to, to understand what the kid was trying to do. That was a very hard act to pull All out. Right. And the reason I think it works is when they give us a little bit of dialogue, not too much, mm -hmm. we have time to think, what would we do in that situation? Yeah. And you sit there thinking, maybe I should give up kind my job. Kind of a surprisingly nice picture. We're both surprised by the quietly effective anti-nuclear film, Amazing Grace and Chuck, two thumbs up. <laughs> I can't believe that with all the star power, Amazing Grace and Chuck is the one film we like.